This is the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast, session number 92, Martin Castor Peterson on Hypnotic Discoveries. Welcome to the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast with Jason Lynette, your professional resource for hypnosis training and outstanding business success. Here's your host, Jason Lynette. Happy holidays, everybody, and of course, if you are listening to this after the fact, as it is with podcast, happy whatever time you happen to be listening to this. You're about to jump into an outstanding conversation that I had with Martin Castor Peterson. We uh, connected a week or two before the Christmas holidays. Of course, this is now through the wonders of time travel broadcasting afterwards, and you're going to hear some themes that have been touched on before, though. Take note of this. There's the whole conversation concept of sometimes it's the client, sometimes it's the student, sometimes it might have even been you entering into this dialogue of what we call hypnosis. And it's that preconceived notion that may be the biggest challenge. It's that expectation. I'd often use the phrase that working with a client, producing change is easy. Working to dehypnotize the idea that it has to be difficult to produce change that's often where we're really doing the work. And I'd share over the years, I've seen many a student who have come through courses and have started with a story kind of similar to Martin's. And as soon as that threshold was crossed, there was no looking back. And that was that moment where things really took off in terms of their skills and their abilities. So take note of the learning lesson here that at any experience level in hypnosis, there's always something to be learned. And more importantly, as we make these discoveries, I feel it's really within our ethical responsibility to share these discoveries with our fellow hypnotic practitioners as well. So you'll hear the details of uh, Martin's uh, website and trainings and how to find him online. He's got some outstanding work. I've personally sat in on some workshops as well and saw outstanding uh, information there and traveling all around the world these days, the wonders of uh, time zones. I recorded with him uh, during my afternoon break as he was there in the evening teaching a class. So let's jump right in. This is the Work Smart Hypnosis podcast, session number 92, Martin Castor Peterson on Hypnotic Discoveries. Well, uh, right now, uh, getting prepared for Christmas, and it's been a hectic week with training all week. And tomorrow is the last day of training, so I'm looking forward to a couple of days off, hopefully next week, just before Christmas. So, But I guess it's it's kind of like what life is all about in my life, right. apparently, for the past few years. So it's all good. It's all good. So to kind of, I mean, right now you're in the midst of a training. Which course is it that you're teaching right now? This is actually a master hypnotherapist, uh, hypnotherapist training. So I'm dealing with people who have different kind of trainings. And we put a lot of stuff together, so I want to push them even further. It's not like, you know, just do this curriculum and you're all good to go, but it's all about me as a teacher f figuring out what they actually want and push them beyond the limits they already think they have and beyond that and then give them an, another skill set to be, to be even more awesome in what they do. So I like this kind of training because... It, no training I like. They're all different depending on what kind of students I have. So I enjoy it because I grow with them. So it's 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 really awesome. So it's a group that's coming in and they've already got some experience and now they're looking at that refinement in terms of taking those skills to new levels. Exactly. So, you know, it's, it's kind of a huge job for me to, to figure out what kind of training they got already and figure out how they work, if if they work with these methods or, or those methods, and then put it all together and still be able to give them all a new, not just, you know, skill set, but also mindset about what's modern hypnosis mm -hmm. and, and make sure that everybody follows, but still grow in whatever direction they want to grow in. So it's, it, I, I love these kind of trainings because, you know, I feel the pressure and yeah. pressure is good because it's, it's under pressure. You, you do good and great stuff. So I love it. Outstanding. Outstanding. So then uh, let me ask you this, because I'm always curious to ask this one in terms of just how you sort of navigate your time these days. What what amount of time is spent with clients? What amount of time is spent with students? 
Good question, because, you know, it, 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 it keeps changing. Right. You know, for, for quite a period of time, I haven't had that many clients because I had so much to do with trainings, but, but I'm still within the belief that I will never, you know, let go of clients because how can I grow in any kind of way as a teacher and as a trainer if I don't have, you know, at least a weekly contact with clients where I do my work and I, I develop my work. So usually I'm, I'm these days, it's kind of like a day a week full set up with clients. And that's the amount of time I have because the other six days of the week, I either have shows, lectures or trainings. So it's pretty tight schedule at these days. Which again is that aspect of, you know, having so many different aspects of one thing, whether you, you have products, yeah. you have classes, you're doing shows, exactly. you're seeing clients and, uh, yeah. you know, here I am and today was like, I just did a webinar, we're recording, a client is coming in go. as soon as we wrap up and just that variety exactly. of it. And, you know, some people will get totally exhausted by just listening to to what I'm capable of doing. <laughs> uh, and I'm pretty sure what you are capable of doing through throughout a week. But, you know, it's it to me, it's actually not work. It's more like a lifestyle. You know, I see the changes in people every day from clients, from students. I get emails back from my products where people say, whoa, that was great. How did you do that? And, and you know, that's really rewarding in a way. And so I feel like a privilege to be able to to live my my philosophy and ideas of life and see the, everything changing right in front of me. So I never get exhausted by it, actually. Yeah. So let's rewind the story back. How was it that you first got involved with hypnosis? Oh, <laughs> good question. Oh, that's way, way, way back, actually. And I think, well, there's actually two versions of the story, mm -hmm. uh, two angles to it. <laughs> I, I was working as a bodyguard way back in my, my late teens and the beginning of my 20s. And we were doing a, a job for, for Microsoft in Denmark. And one of the bodyguards, the U.S. bodyguards, gave me a book on NLP saying, well, you're really good at communicating. I'm pretty sure you know this already, but, you know, here's a book. And I was like, NLP what? And, and, you know, my whole belief about hypnosis and, and NLP and this kind of communication way back was kind of like, well, well, it's weird and I don't believe in it because of ignorance, I guess. And I was kind of just going through the book and uh, figuring out, well, this I know this. And how come this is special? Because this is kind of like what I've been doing my whole life, the way of communicating, the way of understanding all the little details in every word, every sentence, body language and all of that. So it, it was pretty natural. So it kind of ignited my interest to go even deeper into the content. And then I got a gift certificate for something, you know, like a past life regression. And this, you know, being a total non-believer in Anything spiritual, anything religious, anything beyond me just standing here in the moment. Mm -hmm. I was I was maybe the most obnoxious client to this person who gave me this session. And during the session, I kind of woke up thinking, who the hell am I to just, just lie here and be this obnoxious? Why not just, you know, see what happens? What are you afraid of? And in that very moment, I got, you know, drawn so deep into trance and was the most amazing experience to me personally because I kind of, I opened up. It's not like, you know, I got woken up, I opened up in a way and I knew, well, I want, I want, I want more of this. I want to know what hypnosis really can do. And with, you know, with communication skills I had already, I was not just looking for anyone on, on any street corner that could teach me something. I wanted to go with the best ones. So I started researching, found some people in the U.S. and just emailed them saying, hey, I'm this weird guy from Denmark. I want to travel, <laughs> you know, to, to come see you. And I want to know more about the things you do because I want to be the best. So that's kind of like how I got started. And it's kind of a weird story, but everything changed, uh, changed from that day, actually. And I, I went all in on, on you know, pursuing the skills and the mindset for doing what I do today. And I, I'm still searching, actually. I love it. Because love you can it. you can always know more, right? Yeah, absolutely. That, that kind of brought to mind that you'd often have somebody in a class 
And, you know, there's the one that comes in, and you're already ahead of me on this, I think. <laughs> there's that moment of, you know, we have the one who is the natural somnambulist to get technical. Yeah. Get non-technical. They're the flopper. They're the one that's just going exactly. into it. They're the hypno junkie. Yet yeah. we often would have the other student who's, from my perception, kind of in a similar place, coming in with their own preconceived notions and <laughs> sorting it for it to be, you're laughing in a way that makes me think you've got one in your class right now. Uh, that they're coming Every in class, with their own, actually. What's that? Every class, actually. Every class, yeah. No, where they're coming Every in with their own expectations. And I can think of a specific student that came in with that kind of that block, you know, unintentionally, of course. Yet yeah. it was this thing that they were kind of holding up. They were analytical through every practice session. Well, that didn't go right. This is supposed to be this way. And then what's interesting is as the course continues, here's that moment where there's that this blinding flash and suddenly they get it. So having gone through that yourself, is there is there a certain way that often when you recognize that with a student that you're able to help them facilitate that shift? Yeah, actually, it's it's. Uh, I think because you know, it, it it made me think right now because, actually, just today we we're talking about some Ericksonian stuff and how he went with people who were really resisting, and I gave a couple of demos on that. So it, it's straight out of the oven right now, actually. But, but actually, what I do is on the very first day on every training or workshop that I do, if it's more than a couple of days, I always give everyone a promise. Because it's kind of a development I want to see in everyone, even though the, if they're good somnambulists or if they just, you know, have the resistance. At some point during the training, you will hit the wall. Mm -hmm. You, you, you want to see challenges that you think, well, I cannot overcome this. And I tell them in that very moment where you, you know you're not the wall, but you can do whatever then you'll get it. And I promise you, all of you will get this experience and it's the best experience ever because that is when you really know what you're capable of. And, you know, depending on what kind of training I'm doing, it's always kind of like the same day within, you know, after lunch and before 5 p.m. or something like that, that most people will get to that certain spot thinking, I can't do this. Uh, I don't trust it. I don't believe it. I haven't felt it yet. And at some point right after, boom, there they go. And they, they get up to me and say, well, I doubted you, but now I get it. And that's the most awesome moment at every training, really. So I, I want the people who are naturals also to, you know, have this experience and people who are naturals at resisting. I want to let them know that it's perfectly OK, because that's how the brain is built, that we need this experience to, to move on. So I kind of love it, really. <laughs> Well, I mean, if you had to describe what has to happen, you know, whether it's something yeah. of a scientific description or even more of a philosophical, what is mm -hmm. that shift that has to occur to turn someone from that place where they've got that challenge to the natural? Well, I think it's it's it has to do with total confusion, mm -hmm. because at some point, you know, the, the conscious brain want to hold on to what it knows already. And it, it sees the structures, or at least tries to see the structures. And at that point, all the neurons in the brain are lighting up or get fired. And, and it's holding on to, you know, all conditions, thought patterns, emotions, and feelings, because for some reason, that person feels safe doing that, even though it might work against them, right? But if you suddenly trigger them into being totally confused, feeling it's okay, and then suddenly knowing, you know, I'm right here, I feel and I sense my body, I can be within myself and I can have a thought a thousand miles away from me right now, I'm listening to what you're saying. So, so basically it's trans, right? At that very moment, when they notice that, they can kind of, I, I call it explode and all the other neurons with the new mindset around the old one kind of swallows it. And now they switch to being online. That's usually what I call it. Mm. So I think it's neurology, you know, it's the neurology in it. It's how the brain reacts to it. And if we connect the, 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 the brain and the head with the brain and the heart and the brain and in, in, in the stomach, if you go with the, that kind of philosophy, when that gets aligned, people feel safe and comfortable being the new them. So uh, it's all about comfort going from total confusion into straight comfort 
suddenly just being aware of whatever happens, I can deal with it. I, I think it's the same thing we see in clients. Well, I think there's something um, beautifully subjective about it too, that I can, I can get yeah. back and um, I was probably, I, I, hypnosis was a hobby for maybe six, seven years and then it became a part-time thing and then it became the full-time thing. And Good. probably about a year into the quote full-time scope of it, I went to a local high school. A friend was doing a stage hypnosis show and I volunteered and just for the delight of it was a small crowd, not really well publicized. It was <laughs> the fun moment where there's 15 on stage and that means now there's only six people in the audience. <laughs> and I honestly went up there going, he's going to have a rough night. Let's just go up there and support. And yeah. as I saw the look on his face, which was the, oh, really? You're, you're coming up here? <laughs> it, it clicked in my mind this thought of, well, yeah, why not? Let's have some fun. And yeah. I'm an extremely auditory person, thus the fact we're recording an audio-only podcast right now. Uh. And uh, the experience of I was deeply hypnotized and I was hearing the suggestions – after I was doing them. Huh. And in that moment going, oh, that's right. Bypassing critical faculties of the mind. Exactly. That's what exactly. that is. Yeah. Which kind of turned into one of those moments of going, what the hell have I been defining this as for the last couple of years? Yeah. Because this is where we're going. It's that automatic reaction. Exactly. You know, it's kind of like, you know, when when I know when you're performing, when I perform, when when my students suddenly just do the stuff that feels right. It's kind of like I think it's it's referring to what you just said that when you experience yourself being in your flow and you're kind of just listening to yourself, not realizing what you're saying until a couple of seconds after, that's where your mind works the most beautiful way and you're totally connected with whatever you're doing. And that's kind of like my kick in whatever I do. I want my clients to feel it. I want my students to feel it. I want to become it when I'm teaching. I want to become it when I'm performing because – that is the most gracious and beautiful condition in my mind, being in that kind of flow. And, and hypnosis helps it, definitely. So to get into that unconscious competence, is it something that you found, if you had to really balance it out, did it come more from training or did it come more from really sitting there and doing the work with clients? You know, it, 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 I think it's a mix of all of it. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I, I've, I've been teaching, I've been teaching the, the unconscious competence for a while. And for some reason, it became conscious, unconscious competence, you know, that kind of thing. So I know what triggers me. And, and whenever I see kind of resistance, it triggers me even to go into that, you know, state of mind. So the only thing I have to do is allow my time to be present and, and available for the people that I'm serving. And I, I want to feel good and okay within my stomach to allowing myself to do whatever, you know, people expect from me. And when that is okay, I, I can just switch it on. And I think it's from thousands of hours sitting with people, allowing them to be into a deep, you know, hypnotic state and just tapping into their mind and, and be part of their experience. So it's, it's, it's my kick in whatever I do that has to do with hypnosis. It's, yeah, I, I think you know what I'm I'm talking about. That that state of mind, that condition, that you know, realm of just being present. It's 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 beautiful in a way. And that mindset of being present, that mindset yeah. of actually being yeah. there in the experience, you know, it's where I also see a lot of people who would come in and they've they've had previous hypnosis training, they're looking for things mm. in terms of refinements, yet very often that that sort of catalyst is I am dependent on scripts and I need to build up the confidence to put them down. And, and what you're describing oh, yeah. in my experience is really what it comes down to that. Yes, there's a confidence factor of it, but there's also the aspect of getting the mind to the place where we're able to, to play. We're able to be creative and exactly. we're willing to go out there without that net of this piece of paper that someone wrote 20 years ago exactly. and, and just have the expectation that whatever they're bringing to the process, that's going to tell me where I ought to go next. Yeah. And, you know, on, on that note, I'm not a guy who actually works with – I was brought up with scripts everywhere and swapped scripts with everyone like 15, 16 years ago. <laughs> And, 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 you know, I respect people who use scripts today because if it's their method and they get results, it's all about the client anyway. So, but, but knowing what I know from so many years of, of working with hypnosis, no matter what kind of technique you use, 
the moment where the client get the most results is where their mind suddenly gets creative and builds upon the dimension they feel limited in. And now there's a new world opening up. And that's not within the script. That's something that happens because of the script. But if you use all the time in the session reading from a script, it's a very limited time where the client can actually allow themselves to be in that creative mind. So so I totally enjoy just, you know, putting people into the trance fast as possible and just play in, in their, you know, hypnotic playground, if you can call it that, <laughs> where they can be creative and where the unconscious can kind of lead them and give them, you know, the you know experiences they need in this very moment. Because that allows me to have maybe 40, 45 minutes in the same spot that I only spent maybe two or three minutes doing like 15 years ago. Because I do see the difference in, in clients. So when they're at that place, that's where the magic happens. So why not just be there, you know, a little bit longer or get there a little bit faster? So it's, it, it's all about getting the clients to that certain point where they realize who they really are and what they're capable of. And all the resources that were hidden below the surface suddenly just erupts and they realize I can do what I want to do. That, that's a beautiful moment, isn't it? So then what mechanisms can we use as trainers, as instructors to, to inspire that creativity inside of the new hypnotist? Well, I think, you know, wow, that's a good question, isn't it? I know. I'm trying to, you know, it's, 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 it, <laughs> <laughs> it's always easy you to, you know, <laughs> yeah, to, to give that kind of question because, well, I can only relate to what I'm doing. Yeah. So what I'm doing is to, you know, prevent myself from being limited. And to prevent my clients from being limited is I don't plan anything. Yes. Not for the client and not for the student. You know, we actually did have an exercise today where I ask everyone, tomorrow you're going to do a 60-second presentation using your body language. Think about it. Structure it. Analyze yourself. And, and I said those words specifically because I wanted them to really mess up today. Mm -hmm. And they did. Yeah. So I stripped them from any kind of language and just using body language. Okay. Then I stripped them from doing any kind of body language, only voice. And then I asked them to do the presentation once again. And now it was awesome because, you know, when you when you're sticking to the plan, you're not paying attention to what's happening in front of you. So if you know what you're aiming for and you know, well, these people paid for something. So in the end, they need this kind of certificate. There will be some things you have to do. But I consider that being the minimum of the training, not the maximum of the training, but the minimum. And I know I can do most of that in my sleep anyway. So the dimension I want to put on top of that is all the creativity. It's all the let's not stick to the script. I would rather not give them the manuals because they will read on and they will read, you know, a couple of days ahead. And it's not helping anyone because it leads to questions that has nothing to do with what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm the kind of guy showing them saying, hey, th these are your manuals. You will get these on the last day. Ooh, let's nice. play. <laughs> and and also, you know, some people will go totally AWOL on that in their mind and saying, well, now, you know, there's a lot of pressure. And I would say, well, there's no concern right now. I know this is the first day, but you already passed the exam. <laughs> so at this moment, you only have to be present and do what I'm saying. If you fail your exam at this point, it's my job to let you know, well, you're a little bit behind. Let's do this. So you're up to speed again. So you already passed as long as you do what I'm asking you to do. So pressure is off. Mm -hmm. Now the pressure is on my shoulders. And I like that. So I use those kind of psychological, you know, tricks to ease up my clients and allow themselves to be creative in the same way I want to be creative. So it, it leads to be more playful with what you do, more playful with the content, and and wanting more of content so that that's i think that's the way i do not yeah. sticking to any anything really because uh, i hate you know if i woke up one day thinking i feel limited by what i do i feel limited as a teacher i would change my job immediately mm -hmm. so as long as i love what i'm doing i can see the creative minds i'm dealing with i can see the the growth and and, and expanding minds from clients and students and I can see students becoming masters, some even better than me. Well, I know I was part of that. And it's only because I was playful and creative. So uh, that's totally a need for me to feel that. 
and I'm the only one who can create it. So it, it takes nothing more than, you know, leave the script behind, leave the manual behind, know what you know, and teach the best way you can do it and have fun with it. And that leads to two awesome moments, I think. Yeah, I'd share the, the, the way that I go about that is more in line with, you know, here's the basic structure. Here's how we approach yeah. it from a place of context to get mm, more exactly. into the scope of, you know, how do you feel now? How would you rather feel? What what yeah. behaviors are you engaging in now? What behaviors would you rather be doing? And through yeah. that, we, we get a basic roadmap, but there's so many ways to get there yet. It's the places where some of the best information in terms of how we can serve our clients or what can happen even during a show are these spontaneous moments that pop up just from doing it. And then to exactly. to play the game of how do I make this happen more consistently or even there's a student that comes to mind that he got a call from something. He followed the appropriate channels as we should do here in the States in terms of it was something of a medical nature and notifying the doctor this person was doing this yet it's where he just basically said i have no idea what this condition is it's something that might be psychosomatic so i'm and he actually outlined the process to the client so i'm just going to get you into hypnosis i'm going to read the <laughs> wikipedia description of this possible condition <laughs> that says it might just be in your head and we'll see if that unravels it sure enough it did yeah. Uh, as opposed to, no, I can't find this magic PDF online that's going to satisfy it. And, you know, the, exactly. the places where we can reach to literature, we can hear the client mm. say something and just go, that's where we're going. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, I, I like that approach because it's kind of like, you know, all clients, they can dream of a condition they feel is unreachable, right? And if they can dream it, they already have it. They, they just don't know it because how can you imagine something and 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 not feeling it at the same time. Mm. So it's kind of like putting yourself in a state of mind that, you know, you know you have dreams and goals, but you kind of decide not to actually reach them, but you want to pursue them for the rest of your life. And what is that about? Do you want to run after it the rest of your life or just stand still and allow it to be part of you? So, you know, it's if you can, if you can think it, you already got it. So I would rather think positive instead of negative. <laughs> so as just as you said, you know, this is how you've been. How do you want to be like, right? It's very overdurfian in a way. And um, I like that way of thinking because, you know, going back to seeing clients, most clients have an idea that you have to do a pre-talk 30 minutes talking about what they think is wrong with them. I never do that. I would, I would, I would stop them immediately saying, well, I know you have issues. That's why you're here. I know you have thought about them. But right now, before we do anything, I want you to think about a place where you do relax, a place you know, and just close your eyes and be at that place. And boom, halfway into trance. And then I want them to talk about how they want to feel when they leave my office, when they wake up tomorrow, when they wake up next week. And then suddenly the mind unravels right there in front of you. And it's showing you the pathway to success. And it becomes uh, the easiest session ever. No script, just playing, right? So I like these kind of tricks and, you know, doing pattern interrupts and open loops with clients and students even and, and just have their real creative minds unfold and, and, and be the guide, really. It happened with a student, yeah. actually, the, the client of, you know, I, I don't know what to do with this person. Their reporting issue is they just feel stuck. And they don't okay. know what they want. And the just simple question of, okay, well, we're already scheduled for next week at 12 o'clock as well. What is the feedback you're going to be giving me as you're going to be back here next time that's going to tell you that things are now changing? <laughs> Which was his clever way of going, I don't know what the hell to say with you. So <laughs> you tell yeah. me. Like, so the bigger picture was confusing. Yet again, what's going to be different as simple as next week? Yeah. Just give me that roadmap. Uh, so does the creativity for you come from, you know, there are some out there, and I don't think this is a negative. There are some who would often sit down with the explicit goal of I'm going to create a process. Or does mm. the creativity come from the process more organically just by doing it and discovering what unfolds for you? I think it's very organic. It's kind of like I'm adapting to my client. I, I know I have a toolbox right next to me, and it's kind of like, what I discovered from at least the, the, the last few years of, of my work is 
if I start to think about what tool will fit my clients the best, it's usually the tool that fails throughout the session <laughs> for some mm. weird reason. So it, 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 if I allow it to be organic and stay within my own trance with my client, I do have, you know, a couple of protocols I stick with, but actual content and the actual tool, it's, it's, it's kind of just unveiling in front of us. It's, it's kind of just, it's, it's, an intuitive feeling without, you know, saying that everything I do is intuitive. It, it comes from, from skills. It comes from, you know, 20 years of experience with hypnosis and it comes from the client's needs and how they think and how they're creative. So to me, it's very organic. There will be clients though, you know, there will be clients once in a while that are really resistant or really need like, you know, sometimes a good kick in the butt. And, and, and then I have tools to actually go and unstuck them mm -hmm. and, uh, and do what's necessary and allow them to sit there and being stiff and aggressive and then use that to drop them into a deep trance from a protocol, from something that's non-organic. And then when that happens, then we can go back to being organic. So it, it, I think it's a safety that I know I can do whatever and also that I can always stick to a, you know, a, technique or a protocol or whatever a system but i would rather do the organic stuff because then i have to see my client the least times because if you do it the organic way they will have big changes from one session to to the second maybe and that's it so i, I kind of love that i don't want to see clients more than a few times because it's unnecessary i think mm -hmm. and and i would rather see more different clients so i will be inspired from new faces new stories new ideas and new limitations from people who think there's more limitations in life <laughs> so i think that's again that's my drive that's my 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 kick in you know in seeing clients so there's no such thing as being limited it's it's just a lack of creativity, I guess. So what I love is where there's these, you know, these great conversations in terms of the creativity of working with a client. Is there is there much of a transition for you in the world of then do, then doing shows? You know, it's it's kind is of it interesting because that is it a different approach for you? Actually, not. You know, uh, you know, I keep getting that from most people that whoa, it's two different things. And if we listen to the old school of hypnosis, you know, don't do shows because they said that back in you know the British Hypnosis uh, Medical Society back in 1956 or something that, you know, hypnosis is okay for anesthesia, but shows don't do them. And you know, every teacher or mentor I had throughout my career. Everybody who said, don't do shows or anything like that, well, whenever there was a pause or dinner at night, they did it. And I don't see that, you know, the difference between this or that, this kind of hypnosis or that kind of hypnosis. It's all, you know, brain waves. It's all neurons. You know, doing shows in the US compared to doing shows in Europe, there might be a difference on, on content and how you build the show. And I want to make my shows you know, with information about hypnosis, I want to show people that you can change your mind on, on limitations, even though we're having fun on stage. So it's all about giving everybody on stage a great experience and then allowing the audience to watch and have a great experience with the people on stage. You know, some stage hypnotists will just do it because they think they're good comedians and they don't actually care if people on stage are hypnotized because it's still a good laugh. But I'm very critical about that. I want people on stage to have a great experience. I want the people on stage to be able to change the, the mind and the behavior to more positive self when, they, when they're done on stage. And I want the, the whole audience to be wowed by that. Because, you know, I, I usually say to my stage, you know, show students that I experience quite a lot when I've done shows that I have a lot of people coming up to me afterwards saying, well, I saw your show. I would really want a session with you. And you know, some people s laugh and say, well, what was the show that bad? <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's kind of like something opened up in their mind. They saw an opportunity and they saw, well, if he can do that with so much ethics in it, so much humor, so much down to earth, just doing hypnosis, I want that guy to be able to help me with whatever issue I have. So I feel honored by that. And, and um, I'm telling myself that it must be because I'm doing a good, you know, a good job on stage. So 
talking about the hypnosis in the clinic or on stage, to me, it's basically the same thing. It's just a different name, but it's the same thing. Yeah, it's a different context. It's a different focus. Yeah, yeah. kind of going back to yeah. how we started this conversation, that it's getting that mind to that place where another reality is a possibility. Exactly. And whether it's making use of some sort of hypnotic phenomenon, whether it's making use of some sort of just shift in that reality, that the, the terminology I keep coming back to is that we can create the change, we can harness the resource, but we can also go in and kind of break that old reality. True. So it doesn't work. It doesn't make sense to go back to it. it it's real. It's kind of like uh, I, my thought right now is just like, you know, Everybody thinks, or not everybody, but a lot of people think that a hypnotist is somebody who can change another person's world, right? But it's it's kind of like what I tell my people is, well, I have a tool called hypnosis, and I really master my tool called hypnosis. We can go to any destination, but you're the one picking the destination, and I will use my tool as, as good as possible to make sure you will get to that destination, so it's all about using the tool, isn't it? And the tool is being used almost the same way. Nevertheless, what kind of destination you're looking at? If it's on stage, if it's something for TV, if it's uh, with a, you know on the in your office with people who want help, if it's you know consulting a firm or something like that, it it's still a tool. But the destination may change from every individual you see, and that's kind of my you know perspective on it. So then where is your focus going these days? What's uh, what's what's the big project? What's kind of in the works as of now? More work, <laughs> even though I <laughs> didn't do all the work, right? Well, I have a lot of things coming up in, in the U.S. next year. You know, every year it's kind of like it's building up and there's more and more. Mm -hmm. I will definitely be going back to Thoughts Live in Vegas uh, doing, you know, pre and post workshops and a couple of presentations I'm doing a keynote speak on the IHF conference in, in Los Angeles in the beginning of March and actually doing a show there also and a couple of trainings. So it's kind of like, you know, uh, almost six months out, I'm totally booked. But for some reason, some things are changing all the time. So I might say right now that in March, I'm only going to, to uh, L.A., but it might be that I'm going to be in Holland also, or maybe even, you know, uh, England. So there's so many people writing from all over the world asking about, you know, trainings and stuff. And if there's people, I will be there. And if we can set it up and if we have good time, I'm going to be there because I love what I do and I just want to share my knowledge. I want to see other people become masters and, and taking control of what they're capable of. And that's my privilege. That's my job. And, and I love doing it. So my focus is, is just, you know, filling in the gaps. If people don't have the knowledge... I'm I'm not hesitating. I'm, I want to show them. If they want to listen, I'm definitely the guy who's going to speak up. So that's kind of where my focus is right now. Outstanding. And, and where can people find you online? If they go to thehypnoacademy.com, there will be quite a bit of information there. Or uh, even look me up on Facebook on Martin Caster Peterson. I'm always there for a chat. If people email or write, I'm always ready to respond and and just say a quick hi if if needed. So I'm 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 on there. YouTube even there's millions of videos out there. So yeah, I'm all over, just like you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. And how suiting is it that I'm over at the website right now? And there's a DVD set of script killing hypnosis. There's a title. I oh, love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll and referring uh, to what you just talked about, right? Exactly. Exactly. And we'll put links in the, uh, the show notes over at worksmarthypnosis.com along with some uh, videos there as well. Martin, this has been outstanding. It's been real fun. It's always good fun to talk with you, Jason. You know, we, we've been seeing each other for quite some years now, but you know, we all have been on a distance. You already did your stuff. I always did my stuff, but it's finally good to have a good long conversation with you. I love it. Outstanding. More of this later. Definitely. <laughs> I'll see you soon. All right. See ya. All right. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Work Smart Hypnosis podcast at worksmarthypnosis.com. Thank you so much once again. And take this moment to inspire yourself to look forward to new opportunities in your own hypnotic career. And if you're listening to this at about the time as we're transitioning from 2016 to 2017, hey, a brand new year, take this moment and whether you refer to it as a resolution or not really doesn't matter yet. 
always taking that opportunity to bring things to that new level. So whether it's your business, whether it's your skills, or whether it's positioning yourself in such a way to really reach new levels of success, I would share a personal strategy that I'd often make use of, which is that I would position myself in a way that I have to make something work. So to sign up for an event, to sign up for a training, to promote a speech that I haven't yet written, because it's in that position, then it becomes, I've got to make this work. You know, chances are you're on my mailing list and I do a couple of, uh, well, I do podcast sessions on a weekly basis and there's often webinars that would come out on a regular basis as well. And yes, it's that moment of <laughs> Mickey Rooney, uh, Judy Garland. Hey, my uncle's got a barn. Let's put on the show there. It's that aspect of maybe going back to the theatrical career, you know, of let's make this work. I love, again, I've referenced this quote before, Lorne Michaels, uh, creator and producer of Saturday Night Live, who would say that whether the show was ready or not, we go live at 1130. So take this moment and consider what are those things you would like to enhance in your own hypnotic business. If it's your business skills, check out hypnoticbusinesssystems.com. This is the digital access library of the lecture content of my business trainings, as well as the, as if you're sitting next to me, screenshot tutorials teaching you how to build your own digital empire of your own hypnotic business, how to set it and forget it, as my personal favorite Ron Popeil would say. And if it's your own hypnotic process, stepping into your own creativity and skills, check out hypnoticworkers.com. This is the digital access to my hypnosis training. So we've got the business side. We've got the hypnosis side. Either way, check out all the offerings over at worksmarthypnosis.com. Again, check out Martin's website as well. That is thehypnoacademy.com. Thank you all so much for now standing 2016. Wait till you see what we got in store for 2017. I'll see you soon. Hey, it's Jason Lynette here, and I want you to be the first to know as we put up and share new videos and new hypnosis resources in the future. So do this right now. Click the button on this page that says subscribe, and you will be the first to find out as we upload new videos. See you soon.